This video is going to be an unbiased comparison of Motion VFX's MRoto AI versus FX Factory's Rotomatic. Both of these plugins set out to do the exact same thing, that being AI driven rotoscoping inside of Final Cut Pro. To keep this video completely unbiased, I will not be offering any of my own opinions on the quality of the results, the pricing models, or anything else that an editor might have an opinion on. I'm only going to demonstrate how both of these plugins work and let you decide for yourself which one you think is the better option. First, let's take a look at Motion VFX's MRoto AI. To apply it, you'll just go over to your effects, click and drag, and apply it onto whatever scene you want to cut out. Once you've applied MTracker AI, it will bring up this on-screen control, which you can click and drag wherever you need into the window. You can choose between the magic wand, or you can change this over to a brush, where you can set the brush size to click and drag over your subject. You can also choose the magic eraser to allow it to use its AI algorithm algorithms to decide what it needs to erase, and of course you can also change that to the brush option if you want a more manual approach. I'm going to set this back over to the magic wand. To apply MRoto AI, you just need to click and drag over your subject. It will create this blue line, and I can just go ahead and get a rough shape of the subject that I want cut out. Now that I've selected my subject, I can go ahead and decide if there's any parts of the subject that I would like to remove. To do that, I can push Option and click and drag over the portions that I want to delete. With my subject selected, it's time to track it. So we will click on the tracker, which will bring up this additional window. And in here, we can choose to either track backwards, we can track forwards, or if we wanted to clean up our track, we can select clear and select which parts of our track we want to remove. From there, let's go ahead and track forwards. I'll have a timer at the bottom to show you just how long this track took in real time. That way you can decide which tracker is faster. So that's the process of tracking for MRoto AI. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to track with Rotomatic. To apply Rotomatic, it's exactly the same. You'll just find it over here in your effects, click and drag to whatever clip you want to track, and I would recommend taking your playhead to the first frame. You'll see that Rotomatic gives us this timeline which shows all of the different control points of where we've applied our tracker. There's also a lot of additional controls over here to adjust each and every keyframe as you see fit. You can also disable this timeline just by clicking on this icon. To apply your mask, you'll just need to click on your subject. Once once you've selected your subject, you'll notice it's created this small gray point, and you can add as many gray points as necessary to fill out your entire subject. So to create another selection, we'll click on the legs, we can click on the skateboard, click on the wheels, click on the hand, click up on the hair, and finally click on the other hand. If you want to remove part of your mask, all you need to do is push option and click on the part of the mask that you would like to remove. To my knowledge, at this time, you cannot delete singular points. So if you make a mistake like this, unfortunately, I'm not aware of a way to delete it. If I learn how to do so, I will definitely leave that in the pinned comment down below. So with a mistake like this, you'll need to go over and delete the keyframe and restart. Now that our subject has been made, it's time to track it. To do so, you'll come on over to this red record button and select begin processing. Again, I will have a timer indicating just how long the track took for this particular clip. Now that we have the masks applied, it's time to start taking a look at the options available to us to refine these masks. Selecting MRoto AI, we can see here in the video inspector all of the options available to us. At the very top is the output, which is currently set to merge. What that indicates is that we can see both the mask and the original video that it is cutting out. We can change this over to mask only, which will just show a white mask over the top of our object, and we can change this over to masked video, which at this time won't look any different. To make it look different, I'm going to hide this underlying layer so that we just see this blue screen behind her. Finally, if you don't want the mask or the video, you can change this over to just video mode, and that will give you an indication of what the original video looked like. I'm gonna set this back over to masked video, and underneath that, we can adjust stuff like the precision. Now, it should be noted that the precision needs to be set before the tracking mask is made. Right now, it's set to fast, which is what I left it on for these results, but you can also change it over to accurate or you can change it to super fast. If I were to set this over to accurate, it would bring up this warning saying, are you sure you want to clear this path? I can press yes and I can restart the process. You can also adjust the smoothness of the mask with this slider here. You can shrink or expand the mask. 
So if you need to give yourself some more edges or you can shrink that back, I'm gonna go ahead and reset that. You can blur the mask. You can also invert the mask. And finally, there's this option for anti-aliasing, which is just going to smooth out some of the jagged edges. So with all of our tracking done and those options dialed in, let's go ahead and push play to see the final result. Selecting the clip with Rotomatic, we can take a look at the settings. Now, just so we can get a good idea of what these different settings are adjusting, let's go to the bottom and find the display mode setting. Right now it's set to blend. We can change it over to none, which will remove the mask and just show the original video. We can set it to blend, which is what it was on previously. We can select cutout, which will cut out the video. And finally, we can select mask only, which will just give us a white cutout over the top of the cutout video. I'm gonna set this to cutout and I'm also going to disable the timeline here in our viewer. We can adjust stuff like the spread, which will give us just a little bit more width on the outsides of the edges. We can also blur the outer edge, which will feather the edges around for us with a maximum of 10. The next setting has to do with the mask. So we can change this back over to the blend mode so we can see the mask and we can adjust the mask opacity. So if you want to see the underlying layers better, you can do that. You can also adjust the color of the mask by adjusting the mask hue. I'll set this back to cutout and let's go ahead and take a look at what the results are for this tracked mask. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of MRoto AI versus Rotomatic. Just keep in mind, I have not adjusted the masks after the fact at all with either of these clips. This is just completely based off the very first frame. To adjust the mask on both of these, I will show that in the next clip. Once again, let's go ahead and apply MRoto AI to this first clip. I'll click and drag that on and I can go ahead and just click and drag over our subject. If it's made too large of a selection, again, I can push option and click and drag over the part of the video that I don't want. And then I can click and drag again over the parts that I do want to keep. From there, I can go ahead and go into my tracker and then track forward. You'll notice that the tail has been lost on some of these frames, which we'll need to clean up. So let's go ahead and stop our track and find the part of the video where our track is getting lost, which is right in here. So we'll just find this frame and then click and drag over our tail once again. And then we can continue the track forward by pressing track forwards. And let's go ahead and take a look at Rotomatic. We'll apply that onto the clip. We'll see our timeline here. I'll just hide that for right now. And we can click on the different points where we want to cut out our subject. We'll notice again that the snow in the background is wanting to get cut out here. So let's fix that. We'll push option and click and that should remove that point. And then we can go ahead and reselect the feet and just get that selection a little cleaner. From there, we can go ahead and track forwards. And once again, that tail has gotten lost as it's swiping up. So we'll need to adjust for that. So from here, let's go ahead and cancel and find that moment, which is right here. Then we can click on that tail to add that to the selection. And maybe I'll remove that other bit at the bottom. If we take a look at the timeline, you'll notice that that has added this teal keyframe. That's just indicating that we've made adjustments to the mask here on the timeline. From there, we can go ahead and continue to process forward. You'll notice that for this clip, it had to go back to the very first frame to restart the whole tracking process, which could add a little bit of time, but it seems to be picking up the tail better now. There was another bit where the tail is getting lost. So let's go ahead and create that selection so we can grab that tail and then we'll go ahead and continue the track forward. It's jumped back to the previous keyframe and then continued forward with our track. Once again, we'll notice that the selection is grabbing that back wolf. So let's go ahead and remove that option and click to remove that selection, just grabbing our frontmost wolf. And it looks like it's getting a little bit more there. So we've created those two points and we can go ahead and retrack the rest of this. So we've completed the roto. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results. So I am noticing both of these clips could use a bit of cleanup, but the overall process is fairly similar to where you'll just stop in the middle of each of the tracks. MRoto AI does have the benefit of being able to track forward from exactly the position that you stopped it at, and Rotomatic needs to go back to the previous keyframe. So the last and most important element to all of this is how much does it cost? MRoto AI is $34 a month if you just pay monthly or it's $24 a month if you pay annually. That comes with MRoto AI, some style packs, M Tracker Surface, M Flare 2, M Puppet, M Film Look, 
and some additional expansions. Rotomatic comes in at $199. It's a single one-time purchase, and it is currently on sale at the time of creating this video. Both of these do have a free trial that you can try using the links down below. So if I were you, I wouldn't just see these demonstrations and decide for yourself from that. I would definitely give these a shot and decide which one is going to work better for your own workflow. If you found this video helpful, consider pressing that like button and you might want to check out this video where I show you a powerful sound app that works perfectly with Final Cut Pro. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.